action and news from America in Boxing First. Tonight, seeing is believing. Has dyslexia been beaten? It could be phenomenal. This unusual treatment could quickly and effectively help millions of children. The British breakthrough that's changing lives. I feel completely different about myself. 100% different. And the millionaire who made it all possible. I desperately wanted my daughter to have help, and I developed a belief that a solution exists. All we had to do was find it. Good evening. Some say it feels like a miracle. Although no one is prepared to call it a cure, at least not yet anyway. But tonight you're about to see the evidence of a revolutionary breakthrough in the treatment of dyslexia, which is already transforming lives. Over the last six months, our cameras have been following the progress of trials of the new treatment. And we can now show you the remarkable results. Linda Dubely has our exclusive report. It's often described as word blindness, but dyslexics complain about many other symptoms. Lack of concentration, memory loss, clumsiness, and above all, low self-esteem. They have little academic success, but now a breakthrough has been made that dyslexia sufferers everywhere have been waiting for. For the past six months, we've been tracking three dyslexics as they embark on a revolutionary exercise treatment which stimulates the brain. And we've seen something quite remarkable happen, so remarkable that it's being talked of as a possible cure. It could be absolutely phenomenal in terms of its effect on the problem. Uh, it could be that this unusual physiologically based treatment could cheaply and quickly and effectively help millions of children. The last government report found that one in five school children and 70% of all offenders have a learning difficulty. If they can be cured, the implications are extraordinary. We first meet Ben Fig in May of last year. He's eight years old, and for the last two years, his parents, Debbie and Alan, have known that he has a learning difficulty, but have been able to do very little to help. Sometimes when we're doing homework and he's got to a point where he's stuck and doesn't know what to do, his face will just, well, he just, go blank or his eyes will start moving about and I have to stop it because there's no reach in him and he has actually said I know I'm different because I don't understand things the way other people understand them. It's the lines or the blank between the lines that make me confused like they're moving up and down. Writing can be a little bit difficult when it comes to Big words. When you stare at a page of your writing, yeah. what does it look like? Well, it does put me off. It puts me off. I can't I can't stare at a clock and count count them as if my eyes or page goes weird. I just can't. It's like something's confusingly like black and white spinning around. Mm. That's sort off. Of. Hi, done your lawn for you. OK, there's your invoice. Rod Firmer is 42. He works as a gardener and tries to avoid any situations where he might have to read or write. His 14-year-old daughter, Nikita, is also dyslexic. She has a high absenteeism record, poor grades, and homework is a struggle. How long did this take you to do? Um, up to an hour to do, because I had a little thinking to do. Just this little bit here took an hour? No, just 
this little bit there. Just that one paragraph yeah, there to clean yeah. it, That's honestly. It, it is very distressing. Uh, and finding it difficult for myself to help her. That is one thing that gets me down. And, and, it, and it, I feel totally inadequate. It's hard to explain to anyone that actually hasn't seen that happen. The daughter's come home from school and she's absolutely hysterical and in tears because everything's gone wrong and she can't find this and she can't do this. And it goes on and on and on. It's sometimes very, very depressing. Some days I just wish that I wasn't who I was and I was someone that could spell, that could read, could write a lot better than I could. The story begins in July, when we send our families to the DAT Centre in Kenilworth. It started as a privately funded research unit, and it's here that experts have begun thinking very differently about the causes of dyslexia. Rod, Nikita and Ben first have to go through a series of tests to gauge their coordination and memory ability. So there's many animals in one minute, starting now. Cat. Hamster, dog. Oh, can't think of that word now. They are then screened on their reading and writing. They'll be retested in six months to see if there's an improvement. Wednesday. Yeah, we can do Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. And foreign. Somewhere I know it is. Ready, go. The treatment works on the theory that the root cause of dyslexia lies not in the thinking brain, as has been believed for decades, but in the cerebellum, the part of the brain that controls our coordination and balance. The man behind the centre is Winford Dorr, a millionaire businessman whose daughter Susie was dyslexic. The condition had affected her so badly that she tried to commit suicide three times, so he made it his personal crusade to help her. If you watch your daughter trying to recover from having attempted suicide on more than one occasion, it focuses the mind. There was no help for my daughter. I desperately wanted her to have help and I had developed, for whatever reason, a belief inside me that a solution to the problem of dyslexia exists. All we had to do was find it. It was because of Susie that Winford ploughed his fortune into a massive research project. He brought in medics and dyslexia specialists to see if they could find the root cause of dyslexia. Susie was their first patient. It all started in this house, actually, and Dad said, you, you don't mind being a guinea pig, do you? And I'm thinking, oh, oh, here we go. A vital link was made between the delayed development of the cerebella and a balance disorder. The team worked on a drug-free treatment to correct the balance and found it had a powerful effect on the dyslexia. At first, I was extremely nervous because I thought, this can't be right, it really can't be right. But then it happened again and again and again. And once it had happened about 12 times, I started to have a little bit more faith. Winford was jumping up and down by that point, <laughs> saying, we need to do this wider, you know, we need to expand this. And that was great. OK, I'll that one. There we go. I'm just going to clip these onto you together. The centre first measured the level of the balance problem in the inner ear. So, whoa! Now, he's fallen, so I'm going to stop the computer. This machinery, developed by NASA to test its astronauts' disorientation on returning from space, holds the clue to how the balance disorder might be treated. By retraining the brain through exercise, the cerebellum is kick-started, and the symptoms of dyslexia apparently subside within six weeks. It is remarkably simple, and I don't understand why nobody's done it before. <laughs> to be quite honest. The, all I've done is taken the building blocks of research that are there. They're all proven and been repeatable in research, and I've just put them together. For Susie, the treatment changed her life. She has a new job as a nursery school assistant, and she's now able to read and write, thanks to her father's determination to help her. 
Throw the bean bag back onto the centre of the tea towel now. Ben, Nikita and Rod are given their balance and hand-to-eye coordination exercises. They must do them for 10 minutes twice a day and over the next few months we'll see if it makes any difference to their dyslexia. After the break, the crucial tests to reveal whether the treatment really is working. Well done. Do you know what? You got the best results you've ever got. <laughs> And the operation will involve a general anaesthetic, so you won't be able to go back to work this afternoon. And you can't drive. Did you drive here? Yes. I'll drive. And you haven't had anything to eat this morning? No. Uh, yes. I had uh, eggs and bacon this morning. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. When you were in the bath. Look, you were told that you couldn't eat. Uh, yeah, sorry. Are you sure that you had breakfast, darling? Yeah, I had the um, full English breakfast. I had um, toast and marmalade and um, some baked beans and other bits and bobs. It was very nice and I washed up after. If Harry has a fever, I give him medicine. At the same time, I use Cool and Soothe sheets, which have a special layer of gel. They're like a wet flannel, but without the mess. And these feel cool for up to six hours. How's my little soldier? Oh, survive. New Cool and Soothe keeps kids cool. For the last 37 years, Eddie and Cheryl have been father and son. Now they're father and daughter. Their relationship is close, but it hasn't always been like this. I got quite a good beating off of him. I tried to talk him out on it, but no. Lady in Waiting, 7.30 Tuesday on ITV1. Welcome back. We've already seen how dyslexia can cast a shadow over the lives of its victims. And we've seen three patients having revolutionary treatment. But will it be good news for all of them? Here again is Linda Dubley. It's the summer holidays. The families have been following their dyslexia exercise treatment for a month so we pay a visit to the figs to see how they've been getting on. Ben understands what it's about, but what is it really doing? I mean, how is this affecting me? You know, um, the fact that I march on the spot for a minute and run on the spot for a minute or throw a bean bag up in the air, what is that doing? How's that going to affect how Ben spells? How's that going to affect how Ben um, writes? Or how's that going to affect his personality, even? thought that the exercises were quite weird, but well, I've got a little bit better with my hands. The exercises are stimulating the balance organs in the ears, but they are also retraining the brain. So maybe throwing a beanbag from hand to hand isn't necessarily the coordination between the hands, but is actually the visual watching the beanbag and stimulating the visual pathway. But at the same time, it's improving hand-eye coordination. Likewise, standing on a wobble board, that reduces the somatosensory information going to the ankles and the rest of the feet. But it also helps to promote the use of the balance organs in the ears. It's ridiculous. I haven't got a clue how it helps, but it must be doing something. Yeah, I'd say it's doing something. Because a lot of people have said to me that they've seen a change in me in the last two, three weeks. I do feel a lot more confident about myself. I want to read more and write more. I've read all the books in there, so there's nothing else to read now. I feel completely different about myself. 100% different. And that's it. Ben, what do you think might happen? Well, it could be. There's a film called Jumanji, and if you opened it, you might get like... One month later, in September, we visit Ben's school to see if his teacher has noticed any improvement in his work since the summer term. Do you think that he seems more confident now when he writes? Definitely. He goes to tasks now without even thinking about it, whereas before he did used to get himself into a panic. Um, and not just with his writing, with everything he does, his reading and even his maths, he's more confident. 
The most obvious thing is the improvement in handwriting. Um, this one, he's barely on the line when he's writing, and in, in parts it's actually almost illegible. Whereas here, I'd actually say that's quite neat, mm. the handwriting. Mm. Right throughout the story, he's on the line. Nikita's won a part in the school musical, something she would never have contemplated three months ago. Her attendance record has improved significantly since the new term, but what of her schoolwork? I've spoken to her geography teacher, science teacher, maths teacher, and without any prompting, they all independently said her confidence has risen. So, for example, um, in geography, when it comes to tests, which can be quite tense, Nikita is performing really well. In fact, here she scored 17 out of 20, which put her into the, the top three of the group. Apart from her actual work, how does she actually seem in class? She comes across these days with greater assurance. Now there is much more eye contact with me. Informal, is it? Common, it would simple, be... Simple, it would be simple, simple words, yes. writing, not scientific words. Exactly, because you just want... I have noticed a lot of improvement. We had a discussion in class and instead of putting my hand down and just sitting there quietly, I actually answered and when I did answer it was very long scientific words and my friends just start, stared at me and said, my friend turned around and said to me, he'd been eating the English dictionary because all these words are coming with that in the moment. Thank you, sir. Rod is now reading a lot more and his spelling has improved, but that's not all. A few months ago you wouldn't have got me to say hardly a boo to a goose, but it's definitely um, got me more confident. I deal with customers from one lawn to another, so I get to meet a lot of people every day. And I think a lot of them have seen a change as well. I'm, I'm starting to remember the customers' names, which is more helpful because it's quite complicated to try and remember 850 customers' names, but I am remembering more and more and more of them. The dramatic results are beginning to cause excitement in the world of education. Professor David Reynolds is former head of the government's numeracy task force. He's conducting a major scientific study into the technique. To be quite honest, I was cynical. I was cynical because I have to be cynical. We actually looked at a group of children, we tested them and retested them on a dyslexia screening test, and we compared their progress to the progress of a national group of children who aren't dyslexic. And what we found uh, is that these kids caught up. I mean, a phenomenal finding. They caught up the national sample of children, even though these children here are nearly all dyslexic, and the national sample has a much lower proportion of dyslexics. So the second study is, I mean, being totally scientific about this, very encouraging. After doing the exercises for six months, all 50 dyslexic children in Professor Reynolds' study had improved in their reading progress three times as much as an average group of children. They also progressed better in both spelling and writing. The treatment appears to be powerful, and the impact of the treatment, if it were rolled out to large numbers of children, could be absolutely phenomenal in terms of changing their life chances if the data continues to be as positive as it is now. Six months have passed since the first visit to the DAT Centre, so in January the families are back for their final assessment with Rachel Kenny. How's homework going? Homework? Well, I always used to hate homework because I knew I couldn't do it. Yeah. But now in year five I've kind of got confident about it and I do it on my own. If I get stuck things I ask mum, but mostly I can do it now. It's something that just suddenly happened yeah. as well. With the exercise it coincided. Yeah. And there was a sudden uh Ben was able to take control. That's that's probably the best way to describe it. Mm. As before, he I would have sat with him and sort of gone through the homework step by step where now he'll he'll go off and do it and um, come to me if he needs help. I mean, it's something you never would have done, so that's a really big change. Yeah. My handwriting's um, getting very neat. I'm starting to sit there and go, oh, I like my writing. <laughs> so you're actually liking your writing? Yeah, instead of sitting there going, yeah. <laughs> what sort of improvements have you seen in it? Can you tell me? Um, I can write words quicker and um, it's, when it comes to spelling a word, I can, instead of thinking, oh, oh, I just write it down, it comes out like I've known it always. Reading. 
Reading is definitely uh, something that's improved. I will admit that reading was not one of my favourite things, but I am reading a heck of a lot more than I used to. My father set me a challenge a long, long time ago to yeah. read Moby Dick, uh, and I'm, I would determine this year, come what may, I shall have Moby Dick read. Our three guinea pigs are retested to see if their inner ear balance disorder has been corrected. Well done. Do you know what? You've got the best results you've ever got. <laughs> Come and have a look at them. Come and have a look at these. Look at this. So... Do you want to see what it was yeah, last time? Yeah. <laughs> How many greens have you got today? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Shall I print that off for you? Yes, please. You can take that home. All three pass with flying colours, but now they're given dyslexia screening tests, the same tests as they were given six months ago. OK, I want you to think of as many animals as you can, any kind of animal. I'll give you a minute again. Off you go. Ant, cat, dog, mouse, rat, snake. Alter. Oh, can't think of that word now. Crocodile. Ant. Elephant. Reindeer. Insect, snail, butterfly. OK, stop there. 28, OK? So I'll have a look, see how you did last time. That's quite a huge number. OK, you got 22 last time, so you got loads more then. Well done. See how many you can do in 30 seconds, OK? So you ready? OK. I've got seven. You've got seven there? Yeah. Well done, that's excellent. Okay. And you got three last time. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, morning. Rod feels more confident with spelling. School. The results okay. of the research are only the start of the story yeah. when Fedor has one great ambition. Tonight. At the human level, we should not consider denying this type of help to every child and every adult that would benefit from it. So at the end of the treatment, what difference has it made to Nikita, Ben and Rod? If you come up to me six months ago and said to me, right, Rod, your confidence would be improved, your, your reading would be improved, your spelling would be getting better, uh, your right, written... Uh, work would be getting better. I would have, I would have laughed. I mean, let's be honest. I would have done. And, but it simplified my life, and that's important. I'm finding it very bizarre. I've done some exercise and sit there going, how is this going to help me improve my spelling and reading? But it's nothing else could have helped me. So it must be the exercises. It's made me much quicker and better at things because the exercises. I wouldn't think. <laughs> You were just a bunch of fun stuff rolling around. You would, you would think, that's not going to help it. But in the end, it does. Linda Dubley on an amazing British breakthrough. Courses at Winford Doors Warwickshire Clinic cost well over £1,000. Ten more centres across England, Scotland and Wales are due to open later this year. And if you'd like more information, there is a helpline. The number to call is... 0870-737-0011. That's 0870-737-0011. And if you can't get through straight away, the lines are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Coming up on Thursday's edition of Tonight, Angela Rippon knows all about the alarming rise in street crime. And she's been mugged and robbed twice. Now she talks to the victims and to the mothers. It can be a bit nasty, you know, because some people don't want to let go of their belongings, you know, and so you do have to use violence. That's Streets of Shame on Thursday at 7.30 on ITV1. But that's it for tonight. From all of us here, good night and thank you for watching. 
Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Kieran Smith from Beckton in East London ended the show on £4,000 and he had all three lifelines remaining. How much further will he go? Find out next.